y'all welcome to my channel my name is Kim in case you're new here and um, this is Kim's farmhouse life Um, I don't actually live in a farmhouse this is actually a double wide mobile home but I like to make it into my own little farmhouse we do have 35 acres and we have cows and we have chickens um, we have a dog we have a pond with fish um, I don't know <laughs> So that's our little farm. But anyways, I thought I'd get on here and show my face because I have not done an intro on my videos in a while. So I thought in case you're new or just in case you wanna know if I'm still here, make sure I still, um, you know, I still have my face. <laughs> Anyways, but tonight I'm going to be sharing three meals that I made this past week for my family and these are three family favorites that we have been making or I've been making for years um, and the kids, these are things that they request. Um, so uh, I want to share those tonight, but also in case you're new, please hit that subscribe button. I share what's for dinner videos every Friday at 8 a.m. Central Time and I, sh I try to share at least three meals a week um, and they're usually just easy. Um, easy meals for your family. We are a family of five, and so um, it's my husband, me, and my three kids. I have a 17-year-old son, 14-year-old daughter, and our youngest just turned 13 in January. Oh, there went the microwave. So anyways, um, I just wanted to welcome you all to the video, and without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> hey, y'all. Tonight, we're gonna be making potato soup. I'm starting out with my large pot. And I've got some uh, bacon that I've cut up into little pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, fry this bacon up. I'll show y'all also what I've done ahead of time. This helps make it a lot quicker. Um, I have diced up some three stalks of celery, three carrots, and one onion here. And then over here, I've lost count, but I diced up a bunch of potatoes. That way, it's all done ahead of time because that's probably the most time consuming part this part is all going to just kind of go just one after the other so we're going to cook this up and then i'll come back okay y'all now we're going to add in all of our celery and onions which are three stalks of celery three carrots and one onion. Normally, I will take some of that bacon grease out, but there really wasn't a lot, so I think it's okay to just leave what all was in there. It'll be fine. It'll taste good. And we're gonna kind of stir this around, let this kind of cook for a couple minutes, and then we're gonna add in the potatoes. getting like a lot of those bits off the bottom and I had to turn my fan on because it was to get some of the smoke or whatever out this cook for a couple minutes okay y'all now we're gonna add in our potatoes and the recipe calls for six diced potatoes but I don't really know I kind of lost count I just kind of do what I think is, looks good. So we're gonna add some seasoning and it calls for a half a teaspoon of salt. I might add a little more. And a half a teaspoon of pepper. Oops. And then it says a half a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. So I'm using Slap Your Mama because it's Cajun seasoning. And I'm probably gonna have a little more than half your half a teaspoon. Now we're gonna stir all this up, get everything mixed, and we're gonna let this cook for about five minutes before we add in our chicken broth. If you hear something in the background, my husband's putting in some new lights in the kitchen. I'll have to show y'all later, so I'm excited. Okay, y'all, it's been five minutes. So now we're gonna start adding in our chicken broth, and we need eight cups. So I've got four cups in this little container here. And then I have one of these 32 ounce chicken broth containers, which will have uh, another four cups. So we're gonna add that in. I'm gonna turn this up now because we wanna bring this up to a boil. Okay. So 
now we're going to bring all this up to a boil and then we're going to let it boil for about 10 minutes or simmer. Once we get it to a boil, we're going to let it like simmer for 10 minutes. So I'm going to let this heat up and do that and then we'll be back. Okay, y'all, while that's boiling, I'm going to show y'all something else we're going to be adding in a little bit. I have a cup of milk, and then inside of here is three tablespoons of flour. So we're going to add that in. We're going to whisk this together and until it's all nice and dissolved. Okay, y'all. Now that it's been boiling for 10 minutes, now we're going to add in that cup of milk with the three tablespoons of flour. I think I got it good and mixed. So I'm going to add that in. And we're going to cook it for about five more minutes. We're almost done. Okay, y'all. Well, now we are ready for our next step, which is, it says to take two-thirds of the soup and put it in a blender. I may not take quite that much. We'll see. I'm going to turn this down a little, too. I'm just going to dip it out and put it into my blender. Last time the kids said I did too much, they wanted some chunks left, so I'm going to do, uh, let's see, just a little bit more, well, maybe like that. And I'm just going to take my blender over here and we're just going to kind of blend it up. back in there and the next thing we're going to do let me double check I'm like, I don't know for sure okay. the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a half a cup of heavy whipping cream oh, that's exactly what I had left in here add that in Stir it up, and now it's going to be ready. So we will get this all, oops, sorry, I didn't realize I had the camera moved. We'll get this all put in bowls and taste it and let you know what we think. Back up. <laughs> okay, y'all, we just put our new light up, and so there's stuff all over the table, so we're kind of eating all over here, and so I'm asking the kids, how did you like the soup? It's good. Good? Yes. Over here, Adrian's getting more. So how was it, Adrian? Favorite food my ever eaten. Peyton, my niece, y'all. How is it? It was good. So look, she went back for more. That means something, because Peyton don't eat very much, so she <laughs> must really like it. How about you, Courtney? Oh, God, you just almost said Peyton. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Courtney. Uh, battery died, as I was asking Courtney. So, how is it, Courtney? I She's... My input doesn't matter if the battery died. <laughs> Do you like this? You went back for more, so it must be good. Yeah, but My husband's hiding. Do you like it? He doesn't want to be seen. He yeah. gave a thumbs up. Yeah, Don't get, here. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Hey, y'all. Tonight for our what's for dinner. Um, tonight's a little. Hey, y'all. Welcome to tonight's what's for dinner. I'm going to be making something that I've made several times before, but it's been a while, so I thought I would go ahead and do it again. But I'm going to be making lasagna. So I'm starting out with a pound of ground beef, and in the meantime, I have my oven preheating to 375. I'm going to season my meat up. I'm going to add in um, one and a half teaspoons of oregano. This is a half a teaspoon, so I'm going to do three of those. I'm also going to add in a little bit of garlic and onion powder to my meat. And also, I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. <clears throat> and also, um, I'm going to add in three uh, cloves of minced garlic. There's one, two, and I buy this squeeze garlic, and a half a teaspoon equals about one clove. So, we're going to cook up our meat, get it all browned, and then I will come back and we'll start adding in the spaghetti sauce and putting the lasagna together. Okay, y'all, now my meat is done. 
I'm going to go ahead and add in one jar. This is a 24 ounce jar of the Prego Traditional. This is my favorite, y'all. I've tried, I'm going to scoot this a little bit over. I've tried that, ooh, is it Rayo's or something? It's more expensive. I've tried that and I did not really like it. I like this Prego. It's my favorite, Prego Traditional. But you can use whatever sauce you like. But I recommend this. I like to try to get every bit out of the jar if I can. Okay, so we're gonna mix this up. Oh, even off the lid right here, see? I'll mix this up real good. Now I'm gonna move us over to my island. Okay y'all, I have a bowl here and we are gonna put in a 16 ounce container of cottage cheese. This is the small curd cottage cheese. I'm gonna put that in there. And then we'll also add um, a quarter cup of Parmesan, just grated Parmesan cheese. That, that, and one egg. I got fresh eggs from my chickens. And we'll mix this up. My bowl's almost too small, but I'll make it work. We got new lights in our kitchen, and I'm still trying to get used to to them. They're a little bit different, the lighting. I think, because before we had this fluorescent bulb in here, and that maybe that's why I'm just trying to get used to it, so. Okay, next, let me situate my camera. Okay, y'all, I've got my dish here, and we're gonna start out by adding about a half a cup of the spaghetti sauce to the bottom. This is a quarter cup. So I'm gonna get a couple of those. We're gonna add that to the bottom. Just kind of spread it out. And we'll layer it with some lasagna noodles. I use the oven ready noodles. That's what this recipe calls for. Um, I guess you could use cooked noodles. I don't know, you might have to adjust the cooking time. I'm not sure. I've always just used the oven ready. Let me situate some stuff. Now, we're gonna put three of the oven ready noodles, and my favorite to use are the Barilla. I think that's how you say it, oven ready lasagna. They're just flat. They don't have like the crinkles in them like regular lasagna noodles, but I like these. And they're the perfect size, so for this pan that I have. Let's get in here. And then, we're gonna layer that with we're gonna put a cup of the cottage cheese mixture on top of all of this. So, so I have a little measuring cup, I just measure it. And then I'll spread that out. Try to get it as evenly over all three of these as I can. Okay, and then we're gonna add a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. And I'll get it as close to a half as I can. <laughs> you can guesstimate if you want, just. Okay. And now we're gonna put a cup, a cup of the sauce. So I'm using this quarter cup, so we'll just kinda go over. Do another layer of three and we'll just be repeating these steps so okay now finally we're gonna put three more the last three that we're gonna use we'll still have some left in the box we can use for another time 
<clears throat> now we're going to put the remainder of this sauce on top. <clears throat> and I could, sometimes I, I wonder, I probably could have used more in the middle, but I always worry that I'm not going to have enough on top, but. Because <laughs> this sauce is what also helps cook the noodles. So you want to make sure you have enough sauce to cover these noodles up and. Okay, now we're going to cover this with foil and we're going to bake it for about between 30 to 45 minutes. I'm going to do it for 30 minutes and then I'll check it and I'll let you know because sometimes it doesn't take as long basically to get those noodles done. So cover it. I'm going to put it on. Actually, I'm going to put it on for 35 minutes and then I'll check it and I'll let you know how long we end up cooking it but between 30 and 45 minutes. So my oven's preheated. So I'll put this in here and we'll be back. Oh, you'll put the cheese on actually. Yeah, <clears throat> once it's done, you'll put the cheese on, put it back in there and let it, you know, finish melting the cheese. But I'll let you know when we do that. Okay, y'all, I've had this cooking for about 35 minutes and it seems like the noodles are done. So now we're gonna put the rest of our mozzarella cheese on top and then we're going to Put it back in the oven for probably five more minutes to get the cheese nice and uh, melted. Hey y'all, I have you out here on my back porch because I wanted to show y'all something that <clears throat> I have gotten sent to me by New Air. Y'all probably know I have worked with them many times in the past and I love their products. I have two small refrigerators, an ice maker. I've had a fan by them, um, just several things and everything I've ever gotten from them always turns out great. So I've been using this small freezer for about a month now and you can see that it has a fast freezing option. Here you can, um, choose your settings on how you want your temperature to be. Right now, I have a lot of ground turkey in here. Um, I have a few chickens and uh, some ham. But I just got some ground beef. This should be about 50 pounds here and I have another 50 in the vehicle that's probably gonna go in the big freezer. So, I wanted to show y'all. I'm gonna fill this up with some ground beef. There we go, I got 50 pounds of beef in here. And I'm going to probably put the rest in my big freezer in my shop. But we decided to put this outside because we just didn't have room inside, but we needed another freezer. Um, our other freezer is full of chickens and we have some turkey and stuff like that in there. So, um, but I really like this, it has a lot. So if you come out here at night, um, <clears throat> like I said, it has the flash freezing, which I haven't used, and then you can adjust the, the, um, degrees or whatever, and yeah, we have not had any problems. We've had it plugged in, like I said, for about a month out here, and I really recommend it. I will have it linked down below, so if y'all are looking for, like, a small freezer, I think New Air is a really good brand to go with. Hey y'all, welcome to tonight's What's For Dinner. I'm gonna be making meatloaf balls. I've shared this on my channel before, but it's been a while and it's a new year, so I may be <laughs> resharing stuff I've done before, but this is a family favorite. Today is Valentine's Day and the kids, well, Courtney's not a big fan, but she'll be okay. Um, but the boys and everyone else really um, love these meatloaf balls. So I'm starting out with two pounds of ground beef and I just bought some at Kroger's. And we're also going to be adding one and a half cups of oats. And I use the quick oats. So there's a half cup. And there's 
one cup. I also have about a cup of diced onions. I'm gonna add. We need three eggs. I always crack my eggs into a little container like this just to make sure that I don't have a bad egg. I've only had one time that I've had one bad egg and I honestly think it was when my chickens, I had some broody, a broody hen and I think she kicked an egg out and I think one of my kids picked it up thinking it was a fresh egg because I've never had an egg do that before. So <laughs> anyway, so three eggs. We also need a half a cup. This is a quarter to a half cup of milk. And then also a half a cup of ketchup. I'm gonna do the ketchup first. <clears throat> so a half a cup of ketchup. Wait, let me make sure I'm looking at that. Yeah. Half a cup of ketchup. Speaking of eggs, I keep looking out my window because I have someone coming by to pick up some eggs. I'll have to stop when they get here. Oh, a tablespoon of mustard. Oh, which I'm almost out of mustard, but I have another container of mustard, so. Okay, a tablespoon of mustard. And I'm gonna start out with maybe a half, I mean a quarter cup of milk so about half of this. And if it seems like it needs a little more, then I'll put some more in. And I also want to add some salt and pepper. Add some salt. Add some pepper. I'm also going to add in some garlic powder. Actually, this is just about done. So there, I just finished off what was in there. And then I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to mix all this up. It's a little messy. You could do it with a spoon, but it's just easier to do it like this. And this meat is pretty cold. It's been in the refrigerator, so. <laughs> but you want to get all this incorporated together. Oops. I'm gonna have to stop because I think our person with eggs are here. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna finish. <laughs> the person came by to get eggs, so now I'm gonna finish this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more milk. Okay. Now, I'm fixing to get my other, my 9 by 13 inch pan ready. Okay, I've got my 9 by 13 inch pan, and I just lined it with some, some foil to see if it would make cleanup be a little bit easier. But we're gonna roll these into balls, and I'm gonna try to make them all about the same size. So, I just kind of start out, and if, if they start looking like they're too big or something, then I may, you know, make them smaller. I just wanna kind of fill my pan up, so. But I try my best to get them close to the same size. This one might be a little bit big. Yeah, I think I usually have about 24. I usually have six and then four, so. Okay, now that I have all these made, I preheated my oven, I should have told you that. I preheated my oven to 350. Now I'm gonna put these in the oven for about 45 minutes. Um, but I'm gonna come back in a minute and I'm gonna show you the sauce that I'm gonna make that we'll put on toward the end of the cooking. Okay y'all, now we're gonna make our sauce that we're gonna put on top. So we're gonna take a half a cup of ketchup and my kids love this sauce. They ask me to make extra sometime. <laughs> Anyways, it's really simple too. So half a cup of ketchup, a half a cup of brown sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of mustard. So, let's see if I can. There's one, and then here. <laughs> okay, 
And then we just mix this together and I'm just, I'll just set it to the side. And what we're gonna do is after this cooks for 45 minutes, um, when it, and it's basically done, then we will put this on top, stick it back in the oven and cook it for like another five to 10 minutes until it's just all hot and bubbly. So I'll show you all that part though, but I'm just trying to get some of this um, sugar. It's a little hard, so I'm just trying to break those pieces up in there. And I'll just probably cover this with a little saran wrap, just let it sit here while that's cooking. And like I said, this is a favorite. It's so good, it's like a comfort food, so. And this is another recipe that I've made and I've actually have had family members and people ask for the recipe. Even my mother-in-law, who's a very good cook, has asked for the recipe and made these. So that makes me feel kind of good. <laughs> okay, y'all, we'll be back in just a little bit. And y'all, I wanted to show you what I was gonna make for sides. Um, I bought these at Kroger's, they're just petite gold potatoes. I'm just gonna kind of rinse them off and boil them and we'll just kind of smash them up and make mashed potatoes. And then I'm also gonna make mac and cheese because that's another of the kids' favorites. Okay, y'all. Oops, sorry. Um, our meatballs have been cooking. There is some grease in here. I tried to get some of it out, but it's kind of hard. But it's okay. So, I like to use a little brush to kind of brush the sauce over them, over the meatballs. And, uh, so we're going to do this. Okay, I wanted to make sure I had enough for all of them. So now I can go back and add more on top. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this back in the oven for about, oh, maybe five to 10 more minutes. Okay, y'all, just took those out of the oven. You can hear them just simmering, bubbling. Mmm, they're gonna be good. Okay, y'all, I wanted to kind of show y'all what I was gonna do with these potatoes. I'm gonna be mashing them up, and uh, I'm also gonna add in about half a stick of butter. I'll just kind of cut it up into little pieces, so hopefully it will melt and stuff better. So, just gonna mash these. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of stir them a little bit. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper, and I'm, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of sour cream. I'm just letting the rest of that butter kind of melt. But I'm gonna use some of my fresh, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I just realized it was, uh, it was fogging up over here. Here, let me move y'all back a little. <laughs> Put some of this fresh ground black pepper in here. And then, Timer's letting me know my noodles are done for the mac and cheese, which it's just craft, so it's nothing fancy. But I'm trying to make stuff that I know the kids like since it's Valentine's. My husband's not going to be here for supper tonight, but he did uh, come home. He had a dropping hook is what he calls it. <laughs> uh, he Sometimes he'll have a load. He'll bring, bring his load back, and then he'll get another load and go back out. But we did go out for lunch today, just me and him, for Valentine's, so that was fun. So now I'm gonna add in a little bit of sour cream and mix that in there with it too. Hopefully the kids will like these. I don't know, this is just something I've seen and thought it would be good. I could probably even add in, if I wanted, I don't know if I wanna, I could add cream and then they would be more like mashed potatoes. Hmm, I'll add a little bit of cream. My kids should be home soon. They've got after school practice for track and Courtney's doing track and tennis. Adrian's doing track, Ross is doing baseball. So they all have stuff going on after school. So, and they were gonna go by Walmart to get something, a batting glove or something that Ross had an issue with, I don't know. So they should be getting home pretty soon. <coughs> And I'm sorry I keep clearing my throat. I don't know. 
this time of the year. It just does that. Add a little bit more cream. Okay, I think that should be good. I'm going to mix up the mac and cheese, and once the kids get here, we'll sit down and let you know what we think about it. Okay, just giving y'all an overview. There's my potatoes and mac and cheese, so we'll be eating soon. My kids told me they had to go by Walmart to get batting a batting glove, and they actually were getting me Valentine's stuff. They're so sweet, all of my babies. And then Kiki also got um, some chocolate and flowers too because her daddy said she, she needed some, so her brother got her some too. I had already got the kids a few things this morning, but yay. Adrian, <laughs> how do you like supper tonight? Just, there's a lot of skin. I knew he wouldn't like the skin in the potatoes, but I was trying something different. Okay. Overall, it's bussin'. Bussin'? Bussin'. Bryce, how do you like the food? I like it because I've been asking for this for a while now. I know. And I didn't change the recipe up. I made it just like you like. Yes, you did. <laughs> how about you, Courtney? I know meatloaf balls are not your They're favorite, but... I like the potatoes a lot. Oh, see, good. They kind of look like corn, but they don't they're yellow. <laughs> but they're good. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. This is a good comfort meal. And Adrian keeps coming over here, so I don't know what he's trying to say. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, and I forgot from last night. How was the lasagna? Bussin, bussin, bussin. It was amazing. It was really bussin. good. Because I forgot to get reactions last One night. One more. Bussin. <laughs> so, yeah. 